This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. Offenses, the more we have offenses in our lives, the more they build up fences in our relationship. And each little piece is like a stake in your fence every single time you feel offended by something. And every time you do that in a relationship like marriage or some other relationship that you care about, you feel offended and you put it up. You feel offended and you put it up. By the time you're done, you end up building a whole fence and you guys can't really see each other anymore. You know, the biggest thing is that because God commands us to love one another and to love God, when we have offenses with other people, it hinders our relationship with God as well. And so how do we deal with offenses biblically? And there are, I guess, three different types of people. One, well, first off, in the Bible, where God is always talking to us, he is asking us to change. Right. Not about the other person. So when he's talking about offense, he's first off, he teaches us not to offend other people. Mm -hmm. Right. At the same time, he wants us to deal with offenses in the body of Christ. And then there's offenses with unbelievers. And then how do you deal with all those kind of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. First off, let's go to Ephesians 4, 17. The new man. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened because being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness or hardness of the heart. So the blindness of the hardness of people's hearts causes us to walk in a way that 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 strays off the path of God. And first off, the reason why we have to look into the word and how to treat offenses is because the worst kind of ignorance is self-inflicted ignorance, right? Because we have the word here and it sits here and it's there and yet we never open it up to really see how God wants us to deal with things. Right. And so when we rely on other people or rely on our own understanding, it kind of puts us off in the wrong path. Continue on. Um, who being past feeling, or what is it saying here is who um, being very callous in their heart have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, or these things should not describe the believer. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So where is the truth? The truth is in Jesus, right? That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. If you do not know the truth, your mind will take you in a very wrong direction according to your deceitful desires and lusts, right? Sometimes someone hurts you, man, I want them, I want, I want to get that back. You know, your desire is to get back at someone. You know, do you, get to, you know what I mean? If you don't know the truth, your desire is to hold on to it because they don't deserve it. No, they don't deserve that. They don't deserve my respect, mm -hmm. my honor. Mm -hmm. No, they don't deserve me to be humble no more. All right. Oh, no, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So this is how you do it. You, every day you have to renew your mind by the spirit. Sometimes I don't do that. And I find myself going off the path pretty badly. <laughs> which I happen to do all the time. That's what it, what is being renewed in the spirit of your mind. What does that actually mean? Repentance. All right. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God mm -hmm. in true righteousness, which is right living and holiness, which is being set apart. Holiness is set apartness, right? So we have to live according to the truth that God has given us. Therefore, put away lying, let each other, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, deal rightly with the people around you. Oh, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. The only place that the devil can occupy is the place that you give him. Now, Paul, in this verse here, he's speaking about, he's referring to Psalms 4-4. I want to read Psalms 4-3 first. 
But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. So when the Lord, when you feel like you're alone, when you feel like there's nothing around you, when you feel like, man, this I'm, I'm completely different from everyone around me. No one understands me. Because the Lord has set you apart for himself in order to help you be a godly you know, person, to be holiness, to, to walk in holiness, to walk hand in hand with him. That's the reason why. So verse 4, 4 says, be angry and do not sin. And it's good to go back into these verses because sometimes you get a little bit more to understanding is that in this verse says, well, how do you deal with it then? Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. So when someone sins against you, someone does something and you just cannot handle it. It is so hard and it's in your mind. It's always you meditate on it, meditate on it, meditate on it with the Lord in your heart. Be still. Right. And at the same time, verse five, offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Offer (laughs) sacrifices of righteousness. Do good unto the other person. Mm -hmm. Right. And also trust in the Lord that he will handle the situation for you. So a lot of times when we look at the, the, the Old Testament or the New, everyone thinks about the New Testament as something new. It's not. There's not a lot of new stuff in the New Testament. That's right. You can go in the Old Testament and you find it all. Right? right. Meditate on the Lord and, 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 you know, do not. So, like, you know, when it says do not give place to, going back to Ephesians, do not give place to you know, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, right? That's righteous indignation, you know? It is okay, okay? It is okay, right, that a person gets angry. But do not let that anger fester or continue in your heart. Wrath is sinful because wrath is a continuation of anger. And so that's the reason. So then what do you do? So then here's, you know, the, the uh, verse 28. Let him who stole steal no longer. But rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. So first off, stop doing sinful things to your neighbor. Stop offending that person, what you're doing. At the same time, work with your hands. So then do not be a burden to the other person. Right? Do not be a burden to another person. Because that's really what, you know, a lot of times people do that. And third is... To help those in need. This is all brotherly love right here. Right? Verse 29. That no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. So what are you going to, you're building up people and not tearing people down. And so what this is really talking about is people in the body of Christ, because in the body of Christ, we tend to really be offended easily by each other. But there's a right way to deal with it. First, you have to deal with yourself and how you, how you, how you treat other people. And then you can look at other people and see how you react to it and how you deal with those offended people that offend you. Right? Do not use the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of your Now, Verse 31, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all the malice, right? Put away all that, all that just negativity from you. And this is where it takes meditation. You got to meditate on this because sometimes it, I mean, I, I sometimes it, it's like, I think about it like, like, you have a dog, you have your dog on a leash, you know, and then and then somehow like, you know, you're walking down the street and then another dog comes and then that, that dog wants to just run after that dog. You know, it just wants to, it just, you, you know what I mean? But what you have to do, you cannot let it go. You cannot let the dog go. You got to pull back. And, and, and here's the thing is that sometimes some situations, some dogs, right, sometimes that person goes away and then so the dog comes down faster. Or the dog stays there longer. I mean, it, there's, there's no real right timing for it, right? So, you know, I mean, sometimes those things that hurt us or, or make us angry takes a long time, but we got a desire to let that go. And there's a difference. There's a difference between um, you can desire something and not be able to do it, right? And so when, when you are doing good, but... It's kind of like love. When you are doing something good, but you don't have love, it doesn't mean anything. No. 
But when you're trying something, but you don't desire it, it really doesn't mean a lot. So at the same time, though, you can desire something and not be able to do it. And that's when you need the Lord. Right. So I desire to give, forgive this person, but I can't do it, Lord. I can't do it. I desire it, but I can't do it. You got to help me. Right. right that's, it. that's when the Lord calms your dog down by himself. You know? And be kind to one another, tender hearted. Forgive one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So this is the formula. God has already done this for us. He's the one showing us how to do it by him doing it himself. He's kind to us. He's very tenderhearted. He is forgiving always. So there's five criteria that God always does it. He is always ready and willing to forgive us. Yes. Right? Now, he offers forgiveness to me unconditionally however his forgiveness is not regardless of my response i have to respond to his forgiveness or else he won't give it to me or i have to respond to his forgiveness or else i won't be able to receive it and it's kind of like okay god has this gift in his hand and it's forgiveness and he's reaching out to you and he says here's forgiveness he gives it to every single person right Every single one gets to have it. He gives it to all those who has turned their backs onto him. However, in order for you to receive forgiveness, you've got to turn around and reach out your hand and pick it up. That's repentance. So re- forgiveness is given, but it will not, you cannot take it without repentance. Mm-hmm. Right? And he forgives us the moment we repent. Does he not forgive everyone who repents? Right? And his forgiveness through repentance reconciles us with the Lord. So that forgiveness repairs that relationship that you have, right? And so now a lot of people think, okay, so then what about us? Are we supposed to just forgive every single person that comes along the way? And a lot of times in the body of Christ, we think, yeah, we just forgive everyone. And I I have a tendency to do that all the time but really when you forgive someone the relationship should be repaired right however like you know in a lot of people's situations there are people who continue to sin against us are we supposed to just continue to forgive them like you know or are they supposed to repent and then we forgive them see we always should be willing to forgive right but we don't have to deal with that relationship no more you understand? And so there's a lot of people like here today, there's an example, like like Aretha here, who, you know, has a lot of things to deal with her sister. Right? But if she but if you bring it up to her and she continues not to do those things, not to, you know, respect your wishes or to, you know, try to do things like try to manipulate your feelings or, you know, things that are not right in the eyes of God to you and she doesn't change <sighs> just like Pat said do you have to actually be around that person anymore right? and should you feel bad about it no but you have to actually at least try to mend that relationship uh we're going to turn to Matthew chapter eighteen twenty one. then Peter came to him and said Lord how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times, right? Now, in this very verse here, first off, when we go to Amos, let's say Amos 1.3, uh, right, Amos 1.3. Back in the day, this is how they, this is how they dealt with people's transgressions, right? For, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not turn away his punishment, right? I'll give you three chances, and on the fourth one, okay, I'm not going to do it anymore, right? And this is how the Pharisees and stuff, this is how people of the old days, Mm -hmm. they thought about people who do stuff to them. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple chances, and that's it, right? Right? So in this verse here, in Peter, when Peter says, how many times, uh, how often, because after the Lord talks about sitting against a brother and dealing with offenses and stuff like that, and like his lost sheep, right? He's talking about all that stuff, and Peter says, well, then how many times should we... Forgive a brother up to seven times. So he, in his mind, he's thinking, well, I mean, I gave him a couple more. 
you know? <laughs> Three or four, I'm giving seven. So I'm pretty good, right? But in reality, Jesus, Jesus comes back and says, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. So does he actually mean 409 times? No, he means <laughs> completely. That's what he means. It's, 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 what he's, he's doing is he's exaggerating that number. He gives you seven times, I'm going to give you 70 times seven. It's, a, it's an absurd number of times that a person who sins against you. Uh, Luke 17, 13. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. That's what we should do. And if he repents, forgive him. See, and this is, is saving. If he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day he returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Now, when the Lord is dealing with these things, he's saying to the body of Christ, because as as body of Christ, we do things to each other, you know, we fall sometimes and we mess up with, with other people. Now, if that person is always coming to you and asking for forgiveness, you should always forgive them. But what about those sins that we feel offended, but they're not real sins? They're not really breaking the command, but they're just hurting your feelings. Well, you should just grow up. <laughs> I know that's kind of hard because sometimes I'm dealing with that too. Well, that's a hard word when I was when I was going through. That's a convicting word. It's like, well, I should go up, yeah. Because a lot of times people do stuff to us that it's not really sin at all. Right, right. It's just we just we just get butt hurt from it, <laughs> right? And so in those moments, who's the one that's sinning? Us in our bitterness, in our anger. We're the one. Look at that. Right. And a lot of times when God deals with those things that you feel like you've been hurting, hurt and hurt, right? And then God says, You need to look at yourself. That's it. You need to look at yourself. You're the one. Mm. Right? Mm. I forgave that person already. You should be able to forgive him. Mm. Matthew 4.25. Good word. Mm. 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 You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. And whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. Tell the truth. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whoops, there it is. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, Mm. shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, (laughs) shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember, and and there remember that your brother has something against you, right? Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. God really wants us to deal with restitution, mm-hmm. especially sometimes over overboard restitution. I mean, if you hurt someone, you should be willing to go to them and amend what you did. And sometimes do, and not just say, oh, I'm, uh, you know, forgiveness and then, you know, I'm sorry. And then just go away and do the same thing. We become the same person again. You got to show repentance, you know, and this is what we should look at for other people too. Right. And and how do we deal with those people that, that we, we uh, you know, how do we actually deal with that? Well, when we look at verse Matthew 18, verse 15, it says, moreover, if your brother sins against you, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. Mm -hmm. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. Mm -hmm. But if he refuses even to hear church, let him beat you like a heathen and a tax collector. You see, you don't fully have to just restore the relationship. The person is not willing, right, to amend for with the things that they're doing or willing to change, right? But first, you have to be willing to tell that person. 
You can't just hold it in your heart and expect all well, expectations is the killer of all relationships. Woo! And, uh, oh man, that because oh. a lot of times I deal with that stuff and they're just saying that and it builds up in the heart and they end up doing something terrible to me because they expected me something and I didn't do it. I didn't even know. Right. And then it just builds some some crazy anger in the heart because they expected me to change even though I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know anything about it. Thank you. And it ended up getting even more mad and mad. See, a lot of people, they wait until the point of complete anger mm-hmm. and wrath to tell that person what's wrong with them. And by that time, you're already telling them off. Right? That's right. Instead of really saying, hey, brother or sister, you know, like I, you know, I really mm-hmm. felt hurt about this or something. You know? Right. Right. Sometimes you go, you know, in the end, you, you're just like, you know, wanting to cuss at them. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. You know, you want you're holding in that because it's it's just so angry now. <laughs> you know? Poison. Either you learn to let those things go or you learn to say it before it gets worse in your mind. Thank you. Right? Choose one or the other, but you can't have that wrath in your heart. Right. Or say right? wrath. But also if if you're trying to tell someone something and then they don't listen to you and you bring bring someone else along and say, you know, I can't get this through to this person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bring them along and say, hey, let's talk to us together. And they still can't understand you. I mean, not a lot of people have, I mean, this is dealing with the church here, but, you yeah. know, like, if you don't have a church, I guess that's just it. You don't have to uh, deal with that person any longer. You can love them still, though. Yeah. And that's where we're going to go into Romans. Hello. How do you deal with people who don't care about... <laughs> Who don't want to repent. <laughs> who don't want to uh, make amends for anything that they do to you. They continue to be that way. Well, Romans 12, 17. Good word. Uh, what's the back? <sighs> Repay no evil for evil. Right. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Mm-hmm. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. We give it to the Lord. That's where, we, that's where in you know, Psalms 4, 4, we say we, 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 uh, we put our trust in the Lord. Well, we give it to our Lord to help us take care of this problem. Right. For that person, maybe the Lord will change that person. Right. And maybe the Lord will change us. Hello. You know. hmm. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. Hello. If he is thirsty, give him drink. Hmm. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Yes. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Shower the person with goodness. Hello. Because that shows who you are. Class. You are a child of Christ. Right. You know, even if that person, you know, even if you still are hurt inside, you still do them good. And you put in the Lord, Lord, take away this hurt in me. And Lord, help that person to change and see, because they're not doing it, what I'm asking them to, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, How do you keep from being bitter? We'll turn to chapter Matthew 5.43. Wow. (laughs) You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That's probably one of the most that people do is spitefully use you and persecute you. So pray for them. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the just. So you be like him. You treat people who are good, good, and you treat people who are bad, good. Right? Just like your Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. And that way you will glorify him. Right. And that's the main point. If all else fails, desire to glorify God in heaven amongst the people. Be a light that shines in the darkness of others so that even if they don't change at the end of the day they will remember one day that even though they did something because God will make them remember it and then they will realize hey you treated them good either way right 
<clears throat> they will glorify God. Glor you know, they will glorify God in the highest. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm, 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 mm. Excellent word.